Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Wednesday, February the 19th. It's 5.44 p.m. And I was sitting here listening to a video that someone had sent me in my email. I believe. It's usually how, how I end up watching a video these days. But anyway, I'm trying really hard to get caught up on my email and I'm sorry if I haven't answered and anybody has been concerned I'm really sorry I'm trying really hard to get caught up I'm looking for videos of people asking are you okay and stuff like that well I have to tell you I've been busy trying to do you know I've told you this trying to get this place in order and it's nearly there and I have just one more box one little box I think I mentioned it yesterday and a few things to you know find a place for but anyway I was listening to this video by Tony Lamb and I do believe he's a, a good man of God and he was saying something about uh, he and David Wilkerson saw this and saw that, and it was the Great Tribulation they were seeing. And it's it may seem to you like we're there in the Great Tribulation. It may seem to you like this, what is it they're calling it, COVID uh, illness is... Um, gonna be the one uh the fourth seal, but let me tell you something. Um, okay, I have a bunch of scriptures pulled up. I don't think it's all of them, but I wanted to start with this: Matthew twenty-four, verses thirty-seven to thirty-nine says this. And this is the King James Version. But I say Noah. I don't know why part of it says no. N-O-E. But it was always Noah. Before I had. I think I still have it. I don't know. I got one for my, my wedding. My first wedding. In 1974. And it was Noah. And there were words in there. That are not there now. <laughs> anyway. Moving on. This says, but as in the days of Noah were, and I'm on Bible Gateway, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, which would have been the great tribulation for them, and nobody survived. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Now, you know that's talking about all the sinners. Because Noah's sons were already married. Until the day that Noah... See, there it says no, N-O-E. Maybe it's a typo anyway. Until the day that Noah entered the, into the ark. Which you know he was called to go into the ark. And God shut the door after he got all them animals in there. Two by two of the unclean type. And there was seven of each of the clean type. For breeding purposes so they could eat them. And so forth. Let's see. And he, okay, until the day that Noah entered the ark, they were marrying and giving in marriage, having their food, having their water, life as usual. Until the day that Noah entered the, into the ark. And they were in there seven days until it started raining. Doesn't say that here, it would back in Genesis. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also 
the coming of the Son of Man be? Okay, I wasn't really ready to do this yet, but uh, everything seems to be pointing, well, a whole lot of videos, okay, are pointing to the coronavirus. People may say they're not afraid, but they sound a little bit like, well, maybe it's more of a precaution. Let's take these precautions. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's have all this on hand. Let's have all this ready. You know, you, you see what I'm saying? Even I shared a video and I said, you better run out and get your cough syrup and your your fever reducer and and whatever you can so that when you get this coronavirus, or if you think you might have it, you'll be able to get your fever down and keep your cough down and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to read you this. You just heard what I said. They were eating and drinking. Okay. Tony Lamb was also saying how this coronavirus... Okay. He's been waiting now since, like, January 3rd or something while back for some light bulbs that were made in China. How many things do you pick up when you buy your items that says, Made in China? I was scrubbing my coffee cup this morning. Looked on the bottom and it had a fish jumping through a hoop. And I thought, that's neat. I, it was made, I got it from Snapfish. I had pictures of my family put on it. Y'all may have seen it. I drink out of it every day. It says, keep on praying. And it just reminds me to pray for them. Okay. I looked at that thing for the first time and it said, I looked at it real close. I had to kind of squinch and turn, get it under the light. And it said, made in China. And I thought, how they get that thing made in China and into my house in the amount of time I get it? And they probably just make the cup. And somehow they put the pictures on it and then glaze it over to keep the pictures from washing off. And you get the finished product from somewhere in America. Pretty sure. Anyway, the point is everything's made in China. And this man's been waiting on light bulbs. And now he's being told they won't be here until March 28th. That's his latest date. And then he went into talking about how... They made all of our medications, or most of them. That's why sometimes you'll get a generic one month, and it'll be like a round white circle. And the next month, it might be an orange circle, or it might be a white oval. Okay, so, but if you could trace it back, if it's not the name brand, it's made in China. A whole lot of them. So he was talking like, we're going to be without our meds. And we're going to be without the things we're used to having. So I got to thinking. This fear that could be being caused. And no one's trying to be a fear monger. I know that. People are trying to warn. Just like I was yesterday. Because we don't know. This is Satan's doing. I do know that. It is not God's wrath yet. God's wrath has not started yet. Because we're still here. And he promised to take us before. Just as in the days of Noah were. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There will still be food and water. And whatever else you need to throw a party. Let me tell you something. 
I got so many scriptures. And he read a good one here. I'm going to go to it. And, um, uh, what's this called? Blue Letter Bible. Okay, I've got, the, I've got my message here to read to you. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 9. I'm pretty sure I copied that right. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Now, it says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. I'm recording right now. I'll call you. Um, so anyway, buddy, stop barking. Stop barking. Oh, shoot. Did I... Lose my page here. I believe I did. What happened? I had it. Excuse me for a moment. Okay. Now I'm in 2016. I had it. Two... 20, that's 326. Here we are. 217.16. Okay. I'm getting there. All right. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. I was sitting there listening to him, and I felt like that's not very comforting. I need to I need to do that message. I need to comfort my brothers and sisters in Christ. We're not appointed unto wrath. When he read that, this hit me. We're not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Now he didn't read this part. Whether we wake or sleep. We should live, should, the word is should, live together with him. That is, if you stay on the straight and narrow. If you repent of your sins daily. If you forgive other people their sins, you will be forgiven. The blood of Christ was shed to give that provision. And we are to forgive. If God's going to forgive us our sins. We've got to forgive others. And that means forgiving. That, that doesn't come with a provision or a, but you don't have to do this. Now, there, there is some of that. If a person, let's say he raped you, and you have been having a hard time. You had a pregnancy, you, you ended it. So you got raped and you murdered your baby. So now you got to forgive him and you got to forgive yourself because you've become a Christian and you have been living for him and you've been living right except you're struggling with this forgiveness more for yourself than for him even. You got to fast and pray until it hits you. Whatever happened, you have got to forgive whoever's involved. Whether a friend set you up on the date. Are you blaming her too? You see what I'm saying? How far, how far? Many people are you hating because of it. So, that's just one thing. 
We have to walk straight and narrow and put the flesh to death. The flesh wants to do a lot of things that we cannot do. And the blood of Jesus wasn't shed so that you can live that way and be told, don't worry about it, sister. The blood of Jesus has covered all that for you. Your sins are forgiven past, present, and future. And he, he understands our God is loving and forgiving and merciful. There's that mercy and grace. Hyper grace. Hyper grace. Look that up. What's hyper grace? Everything's about grace. We're in the age of grace. This is the age of grace. The Lord has grace enough to cover all that. Don't you worry about it. People that are teaching that are going to send folks like you straight to hell. Because you didn't forgive. How many people did you not forgive? How many people have we not forgiven because of hyper grace? Because grace covered the sin. Please people, I pray you share this with anybody still believing in that. They are running out of time. Jesus knows exactly what this virus is doing and how far it's going to go and how many people it's going to kill and why and what it's going to do to our economy. He knows it all. What's going to happen possibly is that our American companies are going to start selling a whole lot more product real quick. Just my thought. What would that do for America? Temporarily. Let's move on. That just hit me. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to go over the rest of these scriptures that help to support it. All right. Let me go over one more first. Isaiah 66. I can already see this keyboard. 7. When I found this, I was like, it was like, it was like the roses on the icing on the cake. Okay, I already believed it. I already knew it was true. I had all the icing I needed, so to speak. Okay, six. All right. Before she travailed, and what's travail? Tribulation. Before she went into tribulation, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such a, such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Now, I'm not sure what that very last sentence before for as soon as Zion travailed so that I believe that's talking about Israel as soon as she travailed who was it I was watching yesterday or the day before um, the guy that's a Jewish man but he's an American he, he, he was in Israel. Oh, come on. Ben Danoon. Stephen Ben Danoon was talking about USA is in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. 
and how we are so closely tied to Israel. And he was giving a telling about why that was so and how a lot of times in the Bible were not mentioned in the Bible because America wasn't around then, right? But um, it was Jewish money that brought this and made things grow. I mean, I know there were a lot of poor Jewish people in New York City that came here to get away from any more possible things happening like the Holocaust. And then it could happen here, but that's going to be later. Anyway, I'll try to, I'll find and link that video. It was really good. I don't normally follow him. But that's because he does a lot of the news, you know, and I try to, I do give you a little bit of Israeli news now and then, but not a whole lot. But anyway, that that's his thing. And um, he does some Bible studies too and other things. But um, anyway, I hope I made my point with that, that before we go into tribulation, we shall be born or risen. We'll be out of here. Okay, now, let me, I'm going to close. The, I've got the camera going. I'm, my brain is very tired. And I had no intention of making a video today. None. My legs don't work. <laughs> but anyway, it's because I'm doing so much. Hanging all those pictures lately. That's a lot of leg working anyway here we go this was given to me at 128 in the morning on February 17th 2016 so we're going on four years this is your Lord Jesus your Savior I want to tell you some things I have waited to give you messages for a reason. There are so many deceiving spirits lurking about. You are right, or you are doing right to demand I say that I am the Christ who has risen from the dead. And then there was something personal. I am coming soon. For a changed people. My bride will be instantly transformed into perfect beings. And Rhonda, he's talking about Rhonda Empson, is right. You will be instantly brought here to me. See, she had said that on her channel. And back then I watched her a lot, like every day. Now I don't have time because my channel has grown, but I've been watching her lately. Boy, she's been preaching it up good lately here. God has put it into her heart to start dispelling this lie of once saved, always saved. And boy, she's been attacked like crazy because she, she was so popular from the dreams she got. Anyway, that's all she did was tell her dreams as far as I remember and then now she's preaching and sharing other bits and pieces of other preachers that are were preaching all about why it's once saved always saved is alive from the pit of hell okay so and Rhonda is right you will be instantly brought here to me in a twinkling of an eye as the word says, you will be changed. Okay, you will be changed. I don't write well when I'm writing fast in the middle of the night. However, there will be a time of darkness, thick darkness, after I bring you home. <clears throat> 
this will actually protect my other children. No one will be going anywhere. No one will know who is here and who has been taken. They will pray. They will pray like never before. Then you will go to them to see if they will receive me as they should have before. He's calling them his children, but they didn't receive him as they should have before. What do you think that means? They're interpreting the Bible the way they want and have not received him. He didn't know them. He knew them, but they didn't know him. That's what he means. When it, Think of the parable of the ten virgins. They were all born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, or at least had the Holy Spirit. You get that when you're born again. You do have the Holy Spirit. I knew I did. I knew I heard from God telling me to break up with my boyfriend, but I couldn't do it. I didn't have enough. I wasn't bold enough. Moving on, back to the message. Then you will go to them and see if they will receive me as they should have before. If not, they will regret it. They will be the ones to have to choose the mark or die for me. That will be the group that misses the second rapture. The others will come up in a second rapture. I will bring them up also. Believe me. Can you believe this? Can I do what I want? Am I capable of doing all things? Can I do it my way? I want none of my children to perish. I want none to suffer torture. Far fewer will have to because of my plan. This is the wheat harvest. That second rapture is the wheat harvest. The ones who have to die for me this is the grape harvest. Do you get it? It is clearly spelled out for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. This is why you must be filled with the Holy Spirit to make the barley harvest. Please share this with all you can. This is your Lord Jesus talking. I died for you and rose again three days later. I am seated at the right hand of my Father. It is I, your Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for being faithful, my child. I love you so very much. <laughs> That's so sweet of him. <laughs> Anyway, after that, I want to go ahead and tell you this. I have written down here, which he must have led me to this, is what I said before in the other video, because um, 144,000 are ones purchased from among men as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. That's Revelation 14, 4. 144, Revelation 14, 4. 
So argue with people all you want about it, but it looks to me like the Bride of Christ is 144,000 that are purchased from among men as first fruits. Okay, now, that's the end of the message I got back then. Now, let's, Luke 21, 36, we all know, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come upon the earth and to stand before the Son of Man. Doesn't a bride stand before her groom? Now this is not saying that none of these things will be on the earth. There are earthquakes, there are volcanoes, there is weird weather, there are weird fires. Weird, as in man-made, all this man-made stuff by Satan and his crew, trying to kill as many as he can, which is why we need to stay in prayer for our lost loved ones, However many you feel like praying for, pray for the whole country, pray for the whole world if you want to. I know I got people listening to me from other countries. Pray for your country that things will wake them up, and that they will come to know Jesus as their Savior. If not, right away, pray that there's they, they don't die before they get to meet him and make the second rapture. See, let me go on to Revelation. Chapter 7. This is right after the sixth seal is opened and the great earthquake takes place. It's, I'm going to go to 7, but I believe it's verse 9. Yeah, okay. These are talking about all the different tribes that are sealed. And I don't really understand unless one of our brothers in Christ said there were two groups of 144,000 because in the Old Testament he compared it to the 288,000, and I don't know where that is. That was Tim Foster, if you want to look him up and look into, um, maybe put Tim Foster and video about the 144,000. That might get you there, and he can explain that better. Anyway, I think this group is... The, not the bride, but they're being sealed so they won't be harmed. Okay, verse 9 says, After this, I beheld, remember John's up there in heaven, uh, he beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. So this is way more than the number of people that are considered Christians on earth because they've been counted. All right, so which no man could number of all the nations and kindreds and people and tongues, so from all over, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. It sounds like it ought to say, Salvation from our God, which he has given us, or something like that. I wonder if that's been translated right. But anyway, Revelation 7, 9, if you need that one as proof. All right, let's see if I even got that one in here. Yeah, 
down here at the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to go to Revelation 3. Whoops! Revelation 3. I need more light over here. 10 and 11. I already looked it up. Okay. <clears throat> He's talking to the church of Philadelphia. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. That's in verse 7. 3 verse 7. All right. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience here's another proof to you once saved always saved people because thou hast kept the word of my patience you're keeping his commandments you've obeyed what he said to do in his word I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So what do you think the hour of temptation might be? I think it's going to be the mark of the beast. You know, China's burning all their money. It's what I heard today. I haven't seen the video uh, I happen to know somebody here that I found out and I can't say who because they work here has open eyes she told me that and I remember hearing something on a video about the money what are they going to do with the money because Money is the filthiest thing in the world. You do all kind of things with your hands. Reach in your pockets. You give them a bill. They take it. Don't know what yet they've done with their hands. They put it in the cash register. Someone else takes it out. Gives it to change. You see, money is exchanged between people everywhere. So it makes perfect sense that they would rush this mark of the beast to try those that keep because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quick, quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hear, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, I do have to tell you that makes me wonder. He will go out no more. So, I got a message later, like a year later or something. I'll have to find it to give it to you. Where he talks about the bride going and some others. He added, and some others. I'm wondering if it's them, like our witnesses, our guests, 
to the marriage supper of the Lamb, are they the ones that get sent back to earth to be the harvest army? It's not how the it's not how I took it. We will go out no more. So maybe it's voluntary. Perhaps. Okay, let's not get hung up on that. It must be voluntary. That's what I'm thinking. Now let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Some of you know these, and you already know where I'm going. That's okay. It's already there. All right. Now we... All right, I'm going to read one. Makes more sense. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. That's us going to him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as, as if it came from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Because remember, this was written probably 50, 60, 70 A.D. People were already saying Christ had come to earth, Christ is over here, Christ is over there. All right, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay, I've said it before, I'll say it again. That word, there come a falling away first, is apostasy, falling away. Okay, it, it doesn't just mean a f falling away from the faith, like, oh, I just don't believe this anymore. It also means a defection, and it used to say, a taking away. You know how the words are. They have multiple meanings. And Pastor Sandy, who teaches Hebrew, had some friends from Greece visit and they were discussing this. And he said something about it being a falling away from the faith. And the man corrected him and told him that is not what that means. And he told him that means a taking away. That's going to, that's the a harpazo, which told Pastor Sandy that that's when the rapture was. The rapture. I wrote to him a couple times. He didn't answer. He doesn't believe it. That's okay. You know, I don't know how they can read Revelation 7 verse 9 and not understand. I guess they think that's a whole bunch of folks that die and just end up up there. But there's no, revel there's no resurrection talked about there at that time. There's the first resurrection and then there's the second resurrection. The one is right as the first, the thousand year millennial reign happens, and the other one is right after the thousand year millennial reign. So how could there be a third one, and it's not even called one of the two resurrections? You see, it's not a resurrection. It's another rapture. They just get taken. Okay. So anyway, the, the man of sin has to be revealed the son of perdition. Now some people might say, well, he has been, really. Look how many of us know it. But look how many of us still don't believe it. They believe they had a dream. They saw a blonde white guy. And they don't believe it's Barack Obama. They're dead hardcore. It is not Barack Obama. 
So no, he has not been revealed to the world. Many of us know it, but he has not been revealed. Okay, so we know that the first rapture has to happen, and then the first seal is opened, and Barack Obama is somehow presented as the new, maybe head of the UN, president of the world. I don't know how what they'll call him. But he's, he's not going to be the president of the United States. All that's going to end. There will be, there will not be another election. So this is, things are coming to an end. All right, now I want to do Revelation 4.1. Just because this is a, a good example. Reve wait. Four. One. Okay. Now listen to this. Now he's talked. There was the two the two chapters on to the letters to the churches. Jesus is telling them, clean your act up and repent, or else I will blot your name out of the book of life, or I will remove your lampstand, or Let's see, what did he tell the, I will sp spit you out of my mouth. He told the, the last church of Laodicea, because thou art lukewarm. That's the church of today. They're so lukewarm. And is it any wonder? So many of them, they're not being taught the truth. But if they stay lukewarm, they're going to be bit out of his mouth that means he'll they'll be rejected by him let us not find ourselves in that position okay revelation 4 1 after this i looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said a trumpet now, a trumpet's going off. Come up hither, and I will show thee things which much be, must be hereafter. I believe that is a picture of the rapture of the bride. He sees a door. They go up. He goes up. He hears a trumpet, which I don't think anyone will hear except the bride. And those who are going. Now let me compare that to Matthew 25. You all know this. It's the parable of the ten virgins. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Notice, these people are dressed right. They have their lamps. They have oil. They all have oil. They went forth to meet the bridegroom. They're excited. They heard the call and they went forth. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Them that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Nobody carries around an, a lamp with no oil. We all get oil when we're born again. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They took extra vessels. Okay. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered. Some people teach this, and the five foolish fell asleep. They don't even know the parable. They all slumbered. We're all human. 
we all got tired and fell asleep. All right? We're not perfect. But at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Some kind of cry told him to get ready and go be ready. Go to this place and wait. Some kind of message told them. Was that the trumpet? Was that? Was that the shofar we heard blowing? I don't know. How does, how do you, maybe that's just us all getting ready now. We're all repenting. We're all forgiving. We're all getting rid of our worldly things. We're cleaning house, looking for any occult objects and throwing them out and burning them. Whatever. We're all getting ready. Maybe that's akin to that part. So now we've got our vessels and hopefully oil. We've been praying for the Holy Spirit. Jesus, fill me up. Fill me to the brim. I want to be baptized in your Holy Spirit. If you don't think that's important, and you don't believe that's what that means, you're taking a chance. Because I got another message that said it is being filled with, it didn't it say that? To be fit, to be part of the barley harvest? Yes. This is why you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. To make the barley harvest. What would keep you from getting that? Is it unbelief? Is it, eh, I'm not really sure I need that. This guy over here preaches, long as I'm doing this and that and the other, I'm okay. Are you? Are you sure? I think you might want to believe the Bible. The Bible. I got this message, but let's believe the Bible. They all... The wise took oil in their vessels. The vessels are our bodies. We're a vessel for the Lord. He talks about that, I think it's Job, how he's the potter and we're the clay. And some are made for uh, honorable purposes and others are made for common purposes. Some of us are a little cracked up, but he glued us back together and we might have been made for a common purpose, but are we letting ourselves be used by Him? Is our vessel full of oil? The oil of the Holy Spirit. You best pray about that part if you're lacking in that. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, I haven't gotten to the door yet. Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. See, they had oil. You get oil when you're born again. But they didn't have enough to carry them through to the end. Their lamps went out. The wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, went, they that were ready, went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. That door was shut. 
Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. He told me, being intimate with him was praying in the Holy Spirit. That particular wording is not in the Bible, but there is something intimate about praying in your heavenly tongue. And he wants that for us all. He said it himself. He said, watch, okay, verse 13, watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, let me find you that. Um, let's see, they will... Heal the sick, pray in new tongues, lyrics, no, King James. Yeah, I knew that, couldn't remember it. Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. It's easy to remember, if you can remember Mark, it's 16, 17, 18. Chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. They in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So, I think this people praying for us is great, and it's certainly better than nobody praying for us. We know that. It's happened. We've prayed for, like, Matthew, my friend's little grandson. And by the next day, he was going home. Now, he is still recovering. He is not well. The p people who want to keep Matthew in your prayers, his lung had collapsed. And it expanded to the point where they felt like he could go home and recover. Kids do better at home. But he didn't need the tube in him anymore so they could pull it out and let him go home because it had re-expanded but he probably has to have respiratory therapy come and help him with that to keep that lung re-expanded. But at any rate Look how quickly he went from nearly death's door. My friend said we nearly lost him. And I put up that video and the next day he was going home. So I, I, you cannot say that us praying for people doesn't help. But laying your hands on the sick is the best way. And I don't think everybody's going to get well even if you do that. But it, it just it just says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Some people claim, well, well, I don't have that gift, so why should I expect to have the gift of tongues? Well, it's just something Jesus said we would have if we believed. So maybe if we lay hands on the sick and they don't recover, is it because we don't believe? Do we doubt? I don't know. Do you doubt that you could pray in tongues? That's for you and Jesus to work out. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm saying whatever is coming to my mind.
And I know that Jesus is behind this because when I was listening to that message from Tony Lamb, and I'll put it in the description box. Y'all can listen to it also if you want to. It just sounded so... Like, and I got to give these people some comfort. These people need encouragement. We're hearing it's getting worse and more are dying. And he was talking about them shoveling, bulldozing people into big holes. And, and, and I mean, every video you listen to, it sounds like it's getting worse and worse over there. And I don't know how many are quarantined here. I, I mean, I really haven't heard anything about the U.S. You know, in that sense. But they're saying, it's here. It's here. Go buy your stuff. Don't wait. You know. Well, it's good to be prudent. It's good to be prepared. Like I said, you know, you you may not get the flu. You may not get this virus, but you might get something else, and you might like some cough syrup for it. So, you know, I would pray about it, and I would do it, whatever Jesus told you. And if And if you're a brand new Christian and you haven't yet heard from the Lord, then... You just pray, Lord, please talk to me. We're near the end, and I know it. And I need to hear from you. I need you to tell me what I need to do. And let him know that you believe his word. His word. What his word says. You tell him, I, I read uh, whatever, Mark 16, 17, and 18, and I want all those gifts, and I want to know, can we all have all them gifts? And I read such and such a verse, and I heard a lady read such and such a verse, and is that true? I mean, I know your word is true, but is that for me too? Can I have that too? You know, whatever you're, whatever is on your mind, you take it to the Lord like He is the number one source. You know why? Because he is. You need to ask him. Whatever's on your mind. Is this true? How can I believe this? Can I have my own confirmation? Can I just have one scripture. That she didn't give. Or something. Because there are others. I hadn't yet looked them all up. I hadn't read them all. Or did I? Yes, I did. I read them all. Reve oh, Revelation 6. I was going to read Revelation 6, 15 through 17, talking about the great earthquake, and that is the great and terrible day of the Lord. You see, not the day the bride goes. That is not the great and terrible day of the Lord. Although, it's great for us and terrible for everybody losing their babies and pets. You see, he said he's taking the pets. Now, don't you think that means even if you're born again and you're probably going to go in the second one because all you got to do is repent of some stuff and maybe forgive your mama for something or somebody that hurt you. And you got three dogs. Don't you think that includes them? I do. I don't. He's not going to leave your babies. I mean, I can't say for sure what God will and won't do, but I know He said He's taking all the babies, the children, children under, uh, under the age of accountability. Now I believe that's going to vary. According to the child. Well this ended up being much longer than I planned on. But I hope it encouraged you and brought you comfort. 
and taught you some things that you didn't already know. And if you already knew it, well, let it remind you of some stuff you maybe forgot. I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this. And I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and over my computer and over you and your devices and your internet connections. And I pray this will go up and I pray that I have pleased the Lord and that if I've said anything wrong, he will correct me so I can tell you later. I always try to do that even though I don't say it. I pray ahead of time, Lord, use me. And I knew, I just knew when I was listening to that video, I had to get on here and talk to y'all and go ahead and do this message. So with that, I'm going to say bye for now. I'll be back tomorrow or the next day to talk to you later. Alright, bye bye for now. Have a wonderful night or a wonderful day, wherever you are. And um, God bless each and every one of you. I hope to see you soon.